Recently, I watched this video. What's up, guys? It's AU5. Today, I want to talk about a plugin called Spectral Compressor, in which AU5 presents some of his favorite techniques with a Spectral Compressor by Robert, which is a free plugin available on GitHub as VST3 and Clap. To be honest, when I tried it the first time, I was not amazed, because it's easy to accidentally make it sound terrible. If you don't know what you are doing, which I certainly didn't, AU5's video really helped me to get the hang of it. It suddenly transformed into one of the best plugins of all time, regardless if you are more into mixing or sound design. By the way, if you are heavily into the sound design part, you should go watch the video by AU5 now. You get this really cool spectral gate effect that's very similar to something like lossy or some lossy data compression algorithm. In this video, I want to show you some techniques that I really liked so far. Different ones than in AU5's video, of course. I will explain how the effect works. And I will also compare one of Spectral Compressor's use cases to Soothe 2. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about a compressor that actually sounds different. So here we are in my current beat project. I decided to let this up. I call it the discovery up because it sounds like someone just said, Oi Rika, I discovered something. Play the melodies in the intro. But once the chorus drops, it is pushed away by the lead melody to increase the impact by enlarging the space between the elements in the mix, while not actually removing stuff to retain a sense of complexity and depth. Listen closely. <laughs> By the way, if you are interested in how to make sounds like this corrupted lead, I made a video on that too. It's called Corrupting Arps Melodically. Let's take a closer look at this instance of Spectral Compressor on the Discovery app and discover together what this plugin does on this practical example. <laughs> The frequency analyzer shows three overlapping pieces of information. The black area shows the spectrum of the dry input. The blue area demonstrates the gain modulation. And the blue curve is a parabola that depicts the overall desired frequency response of the output. At the moment I have only dialed in downwards compression, because ducking audio only requires things to get quieter. Global threshold shifts the parabola on the y-axis. Threshold center moves it on the x-axis. Threshold slope tilts it. And threshold curve lets you adjust its width. I concentrated the signal around 590Hz in the low mids, because the lead synth has its sweet spot in the high mids, so I needed the discovery arp to get out of the high mids way. Nice detail, channel linking to 0% makes sure that the stronger the compressor is working, the more it reduces stereo width, to make sure the discovery arp gets out of the way of the lead synth stereo width, to make it appear a little bigger. Usually when driving a compressor fast, they distort really hard. Because if you removed the envelope follower from a compressor, the only thing left would be a saturator, a wave shaper. Fast attack and release times don't add harmonics in the frequency domain though. So you can easily use 0 milliseconds of attack without those artifacts. Nevertheless, I added some release to make it groove better. Sometimes I wonder what it would sound like to apply different release times throughout the spectrum. 
What if there was a parabola for that too? I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but maybe worth a try. Just like in normal compressors, more attack lets more transients through. That wouldn't be appropriate for a ducking patch though, so let's keep it low or off. Window size and overlap are parameters related to the Fourier transform, the algorithm that converts a signal into the frequency domain. The window size parameter defines the amount of bins. At the moment, there are 4096 bins. That's comparable to having 4096 bandpass filters in parallel with the frequencies linearly mapped across the spectrum. At low window sizes, there is a lack of low end and overall fidelity. But high window sizes are less accurate in time and have audible pre ringing. I chose quite a high window size here, because the pre ringing makes sure it already starts ducking before the transient of the sidechain input appears. So the pre ringing is actually useful and not an artifact in this case. It's hard to describe what a window overlap parameter does without explaining the shortcomings of the Fourier transform algorithm. If you want to learn more about that, check out some 3 blue one brown video or something. Let's just put it like this. If there were no overlapping windows, the effect would sound grainy. That's why the minimum amount of windows in this plugin is not one. Higher amounts of overlapping windows increase the time resolution of the effect. But it's definitely more on the subtle side of things. I want to present to you another instance of Spectral Compressor where I experienced unusual and pleasant results. We are now in the effect chain of the corrupt lead. You can see this time I used both the up and downwards compression, fully maxed out ratios. The high frequency roll off softens things a little though, especially on the upwards compression. This time I used a low window size but maxed out the overlap because it sounded a little fuller. Hard to judge though because it also got slightly louder. And I dialed in some attack. Check out the AB compare between the dry signal and with the spectral compressor mixed in a lot. Here we have EB Spectral All Pass by Erwin Bristow. Just like a spectral compressor, it processes the spectrum based on the dynamics of the bins, but it uses the data to modulate delays instead of wave shapes. It comes earlier in the chain of this lead sound. I feel like all these spectral processes added some kind of acoustical foam around the sound, almost like every musical impact is being softly absorbed by a sponge of sound. This is the kind of detail that makes the difference between a good sound and a sound that actually feels multidimensional without even having to throw a reverb on stuff. By the way, check out what happens when I turn up attack.
as expected. I'll add more transients through. But this is not a single transient per peak in a waveform. It is 512 unique transients that all sound a little different. That makes larger attack values sound rather unstable. Which is probably cool for some sound design. But I'm wondering if anything could be done to make it sound more transparent in a spectral compressor. For example, what if there was a look ahead parameter so that the attack state can already finish before the transients appear. Another idea I had was to dynamically modulate spectral linking so that transients make the gain modulation more aligned throughout the spectrum. It would still open up and become more spectral again at the body and tail of a sound. I feel like that could work. Before calling it a day I wanna go back to the discovery app and show you an AB between Robert Spectral Compressor and Oak Sound Sooth 2 in sidechain mode. When this button is enabled you hear Sooth 2 else you hear the Spectral Compressor. Listen closely to the way the ARP is ducked by the different plugins. did you like more and why? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so let me explain to you my way of thinking here, okay? Unlike Spectral Compressor, the curve in Sooth does not describe the desired frequency response, but where in the spectrum the gain reduction should be the strongest. So I had to draw kind of the opposite curve of that parabola in Sooth 2 to approximate the behavior of my Spectral Compressor patch. Due to the fact that you can drag knots on an EQ pad instead of having to move horizontal sliders, dialing in a good frequency response has a better workflow in SUV2 so far. And the sharpness and selectivity controls enable you to define even better how the plugin should interpret the spectral data. I could even rebuild the stereo link trick. And I suppose the resolution settings are doing what Spectral Compressor's window overlap parameter does. Nevertheless, the results were both fantastic and really close to each other. I'm not even sure which one sounded better to me yet. If Robert implemented some mouse and key events on the spectrum analyzer to make it possible to interact with the various parabola parameters right on the parabola itself, Spectral Compressor's workflow might become just as good as Sooth's one. And unlike Sooth, Spectral Compressor solves even more kinds of problems than just making resonances quieter. On top of that, there is a massive price difference between Sooth 2 and Spectral Compressor. Sooth 2 costs 200 euro and Spectral Compressor costs 200 euro less than that. It's been six years now since Soof 1 was released. Oxound started a massive trend back then. Everyone was amazed by the problem solver that solved a problem no one knew we even suffered from, but everyone immediately agreed that we do, that the problem needs to be solved. It was so obvious all of a sudden. But now six years have passed and plugins like Spectral Compressor exist. AU5 found a few sick workflows with it and I found some myself. I think you should go check it out if you haven't already. There still seems to be a lot to discover.